Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are working on the theory aspect of chapter 11, which is on the statement of cash flows. And in the introductory video, um, this, this here, uh, this video is kind of like going to tie everything all together. So I'm just going to briefly go back over what was talked about in the last videos as an overview and you'll see it how it all comes together because I had been saying oh I'm not showing the financial the statement of cash flows just yet because I want you to understand the underlying concepts so that when you do see it you can you realize where this information is coming from right uh, that you know the ideas it is based upon so in our first video we had talked about you know uh, cash versus accrual accounting and how we have to we take our accrual accounting and we have to look at the different accounts and make the adjustments for those accounts that to bring us back to our cash position because in the business cash is king if you don't have enough cash to pay your bills it doesn't matter how great your financial statements look like okay and that's you know and it just popped into my head because the next video next yeah Next video should be on uh, focus on decision making and doing financial analysis. I mean, when you have all of the, you know, it's like, why do we have all of these here uh, ratios? Well, in looking at these ratios, um, you know, certain ones can look stellar, but other ones, you know, when you look at them, it says you're in real trouble. Okay, even though those other ones look good. All right. So, but that's uh, jumping into the next video. So, for right now. Um, just realize that we're taking our accrual and we're adjusting to our cash position and to do that what we're going to do is we're going to create our statement of cash flows in in the statement we have act, operating activities investing activities and financing activities right. um, and then in this video um, we're going to talk about the different formats the indirect method and the direct method but to tie everything together Again, we talked about cash basis versus accrual and why we're adjusting the accrual to see where our cash position is. And then what we're doing what we're doing is we're taking our financial statements and we're adjusting out you know, we're looking at different things on our financial statements. The income statement was our operating activities. Um, as a general overall thing, okay. The balance sheet here in your asset section, all right, is kind of relates to investing activities. And in our long term uh, liabilities and our stockholders' equity, we're talking more along the lines of financing activities, right? And we're going to be looking at those accounts and seeing what, you know, what changes we had and take those into consideration in order to arrive at our cash position. The different sections, you know, on the statement, operating, investing, and financing, right? And under operating activities, I kind of had said, okay, think about the, these are, you know, the steps or the things to look at as far as operating activities is concerned. Um, and I said, you know, use them as a checklist, but don't just use them blindly, okay? We're going to start out here with our net income, and then we're going to say, okay, we'll group these two together and look at our expenses and our revenues and what we have, whatever changes we have to make concerning that. Because remember, our ac operating activities generally come from our statement, our income statement, right? Um, then we're going to look at the increase or decrease in our non-cash current assets. So on the balance sheet, Let's jump back up. On the balance sheet, over here, as far as current assets are concerned, all right, this is operating also, right? Mostly having to do with accounts receivable. Okay. Then we have to take a look at our effect on our current liabilities. Okay. If we go back up to here. In the balance sheet, in the current liabilities here, we're going to consider this as operating also, but this mostly has to do with the accounts payable. 
All right. And now notice that when I first did this, I said operating here, income statement, the totality of the income statement. And then I said investing was over here in the long term assets, but I didn't say anything about the current assets. And then I said financing is the long term liabilities and our stockholders equity, but I didn't say anything about the current uh, liabilities. Now you can see why, you know, um, why I did that, because it was easier just to be able to see, OK, this is investing and this is financing. And now when I bring back in the operating, I can I know, oh, yeah, here's my income statement. And then these two sections on my balance sheet, I have to look at as far as uh, my operating activities. And when you're doing this. Like I had said, you'll start out with your net income, you'll and, and this was sort of a checklist, but it's not uh, don't just go step by step and saying, yes, I mean, I do this, I do this. I, it, it's to give you a general idea. I start out with net income, then I look at expenses. So I'm going to want to do this. Then I'm going to look at revenues and I'm going to want to do this. But when it comes to these two here are uh, non cash current assets, this is either going to be an increase or a decrease right, of my current assets. And it's the same thing with my liabilities here. This is going to be an increase or a decrease of my current liabilities. So I'm going to take these two together, these two together, and these three. So, you know, really you're looking at five different things here as far as your operating activities. Then we've come down to our investing activities. And really for investing activities, you know, we're looking at whether we have a, whether we've invested in a long term asset. And then we have to look at the non cash transactions that are related to the long term assets. That's what ends up in the investing activities and financing activities. We have we look at our long term liabilities. We look at, you know, so that's our liability section. And then we look at our uh, equity section of the balance sheet. We're looking at common stock, preferred stock and our treasury stock and then the change in the retained earnings okay because remember when you you know as an overall thing if you think about equity right what is it you know it is something that you kind of like owe to somebody else i mean somebody's buying the common stock from you okay they're giving you money they're investing you, know, you want to have an increase in that um, you know when you buy back the treasury stock you're taking away from that and of course retained earnings is money that is increasing um, so your activities at the financing of it has increased your retained earnings at least that's how i think about it but anyway um, you have these you know these four transactions that affect uh, you know not transactions these four adjustments that affect the different portions of the balance sheet, the long term liabilities and then the equity section of your uh, balance sheet. All right. So when we've you've gone through and you've looked at these. OK. And remember that what you're doing here is and I'll just use this increase or decrease in long term liabilities from the balance sheet. What you're doing is, is you have to do this math over on the side away from the statement of cash flows you're going to go and you're going to say okay what was my balance in 2013 All right and then i'm going to look at my balance in 2014 All right and the difference between the two is my increase or decrease that i have to put on so if i have x minus y actually it should be y minus x All right so it'd be my y of 2014 minus my X from 2013 that's going to give me a difference okay and that difference is what you're going to put on your statement of cash flows as either an increase or a decrease right so that's what you're kind of like doing with all of these uh, adjustments for your operating investing and financing activities you're doing all of this math on the side on a separate piece of paper as a separate calculation and then you put all of that information together on your statement of cash flows and when you do that you use two there's two different uh, formats for doing it there is the indirect method and the direct method um, learn them both there is no it all depends upon what the way someone wants the information presented um, 
I think it's a little easier to use the indirect method, all right? But um, it, it, there's no uh, preference, okay? Um, a business can, you know, they decide which one, which format they want to use, and that's what they go with. So you have to learn both equally, okay? It's not like, oh, I concentrate on this one, okay? I find using the indirect method just a little easier from my understanding, all right? But it, that's all it is, is just from my understanding. I have to understand both of them equally well, right? So when we're looking at the formats of these statements, you're going to have a heading, Okay, and notice it's for the year ended. Okay, so it's for a period ending. You're using the same heading convention as you use for your income statement and for your statement of retained earnings, right? When you create these. And these are financial statements, so they have to be properly formatted using the correct indentations. Okay, and you'll see um, a completed copy in the next. Uh, on the next slide. So you're going to have to use the correct naming conventions. You'll have to use the correct indentations. You'll have to use the correct dollars and cents. You'll have to use the correct underlining and double underlining. It is a financial statement that people use to make uh, financial decisions from. So you must follow formatting procedures. All right. Uh, it, you'll, you know, in taking a test, yeah, you'll lose point big points because it's formatting. All right, but if you're in a business and somebody make you don't format correctly, somebody makes a financial decision on it, and they decide to sue you, even though you work for the company, it can be held against you. Okay, um, but that's a whole other story. Right? So as far as formats is concerned, when you're creating it, notice that you have an operating section, you have the investing section here, and then you have the financing section here. You have the same thing over here for the direct method, operating, investing, and financing. Right. Now, it says here, it says adjustments to reconcile net income to cash provided by operating activities. So you start out with your net income here, right? And that comes from your income statement. And then this here, you know, I would pay attention to these two. You know, these this would be, if you want a cheat sheet, these are the cheat sheets, okay? Because what you're doing is, is if you just go down, this go down this way, you're creating that statement of income, I mean, statement of cash flows. So you set out your heading here, your cash flows from operating activities, and then you put in your net income. Now, depending upon which adjustments you have, you'll, you'll include those on it. And this makes it a little easier uh, uh, for me to understand um, because I can look and, and this is why I like the indirect method and you'll see versus the direct method in just a second here. I can go down here and I can say, okay, I have depreciation and amortization, all right? Well, if I had a depreciation expense and let's just call it 10,000, well, it says plus depreciation. If I had depreciation expense of 10,000, then I'm going to add 10,000 on the statement of cash flow, all right? If I had an amortization expense of 5,000, I'm going to add 5,000 for the amortization, amortization expense. I go down to the next one. It says loss on sale of a long-term asset, okay? Well, if I had a loss, then I'm going to add the loss in, right? If I didn't have a loss, I go to the next one, which says a gain on the sale of the long-term asset. Well, if I had a gain, let's say, you know, I sold that asset and I had a gain of $20,000, well, I'm going to subtract the $20,000. So what I'm trying to get at here is, is even if you don't, in the back of your mind, understand why a gain, you know, um, we would want to subtract it, all you need to do is just follow what's here, okay? Plus it, you know, you look at this and say depreciation. Ah, yeah, I had it, I added it in. If I had a gain on the sale of a long-term asset, whatever amount that is, 20,000, oh, I subtract it. The next one here is increase in current assets other than cash. So that would, you know, I have to know, you know, what that is. Well, if it's an accounts receivable and my accounts receivable year over year, or accounting period over accounting period went up 
you know, I had an increase in it, well, then I'm going to subtract that amount because it says minus right there. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is almost that, you know, cookie cutter step-by-step -step process that you can follow. And, you know, I, you know, like I said, this is your cheat sheet. Just go down each and every item, look at the description, determine what, you know, how much that amount is. And remember that's done you know, on a separate, you know, a piece of paper is a separate calculation and whatever amount you come up with it, you know, you take that amount and you apply whether you add it or subtract it based upon the sign symbol here. Okay. So then like we have here an increase in current liabilities. Well, if my liabilities went down, all right, I wouldn't, you know, it went down by $7,000. Well, then of course I, you know, this has increased. So I don't have to do anything with it. Right. But it's a, if, since it went down, it decreased. Ah, when I have a decrease in my current liabilities, which would be more my accounts payable, all right, um, I would subtract it because I have a minus sign here. And then here's a formatting issue. You know, your net cash provided by used for operating activities. That should be the description, and you're doing the total amount. So you would have all of these numbers. You'd have an underline, and then you have the balance over here, right? Because over here, what we want to have is operating, investing, and financing to get the net increase or decrease in our cash for the year, right? Right here. So two columns, multi-step. We're doing the math in one column, putting the total in the right-hand column. So that's the structure of the, the financial statement. So you've got the operating activity section. Now we do the investing activities. You know, we go through those two trans those two adjustments there, the same as we did uh, for these operating ones, and we come up with a balance here, okay, for the operating. And then we do the same thing with the financing activities. You know, we look, you know, we're looking here, and it says cash receipts from an issuance of stock. Well, if my, I issued twenty thousand dollars worth of stock, and I got paid for it because it's a cash, right? I didn't do a stock dividend. Well, then I'm going to add in that cash. I have a sale of treasury stock. If I sell the treasury, sell some treasury stock, you know, I'm going to add that back in. You know, just look at the descriptions and whatever number you come up with, follow the uh, the mathematical sign, plus or minus, right? And put them in this, you know, in this column, do the math in order to get your financing activities. And then we're going to add our operating, our investing, and our financing all together to get our net increase or decrease. Okay, so that's the structure for the indirect method. For the direct method, we're going to be using basically the same numbers, but we're just, you know, uh, looking at it from a different perspective. Okay. And you'll see why, I, you know, you'll start to see why I like this indirect method because it, it, it you know, here I'm looking at things like um, accounts receivable and accounts payable. Notice what we're doing over here. We're taking our receipts, right, and then collections from customers, then interest received, and then dividends to get a total cash receipt. So I'm actually going and I have to drill down in my uh, accrual accounting and pull out all of that uh, those cash transactions in order to put it on the statement of cash flows. That's why it's called the direct method. We're looking at the information that's directly there as if it was a cash basis consideration. All right? Whereas with the indirect method, we're taking the accrual and we're just making adjustments. With the direct method, we're actually looking at all the transactions and pulling that information out to put it directly on the statement of cash flows. So payments, you know, we have to look at payments to suppliers, to employees, you know, for interest, for income taxes. And now you can see how this is going, this gets to be a lot more complicated because we are drilling down to specific transactions. But we end up with, we do the math, right? We end up with our operating. Then we do the same thing with our investing, right? Come up with a number there. And then we do our financing, okay? Now, notice that here in the operations section, this is where we're
pulling out the transactions that are directly related to it. But notice over here for our investing and over here for our financing, it's the same as our indirect method. Okay, So the only real change that you have is over here for the operating section. All right? And again, this becomes just more you know, transaction specific. You know, when I'm looking at my revenues, okay, I have to drill down and I'm looking at you know, how the cash was received. And any of our expenses when we're paying out, okay, I have to I'm looking at you know the cash that was actually paid out. Right? Oh, get my pen back. Okay, so when I have my financing activities here, okay, that's going to be a dollar amount. And of course, the uh, adding of the operating, investing, and financing gives me my net increase or decrease in my cash during the period. All right, so this is kind of the structure, and again, the cheat sheet, depending upon the method you use. Okay, you know, if I'm going to be doing homework problems, these are going to be sitting right next to me. All right, and uh, and I'm going to use this as the template, as the, the checklist, to be able to create those statements. But remember, this is not 100%. Okay, you can have some situations where it's not listed on here on these these here. But as long as you're thinking from the perspective of how does this affect my cash, then you can make the adjustment in the appropriate section if you understand the structure of the the statement. So now let's jump down here to what they actually look like when they're completed. Right? Again, the headings, just like the income statement and statement of retained earnings. The formatting is important. All right? Format is important. Okay. You'll have headings, indentations. Okay. Now notice you don't put the plus or minuses here, but you do put the descriptions appropriately. Capitalized, spelling is correct, all written out, no shortcuts. Notice it says decrease in accounts receivable. You write out the words decrease in accounts receivable. If me, and you'll see me doing this in the homework problem, you know, I'm going to probably do something like decrease in accounts payable, right, as a shortcut because I know I'm not formally creating the statement, but if I am formally creating the statement, it's going to look exactly like this. Okay. All right. So again, dollar signs, right? The is the first numbers underlines were appropriate and notice that we have a mathematical calculation and the amount ends up here. This amount less this amount gives me this amount, all right? Which is our operating activities, net income, less the adjustments gives me my uh, net cash provided by operating activities then I have my next section for my investing next section for my financing and then the net increase in my cash right? and all I'm doing is, is I'm plugging in the numbers into this particular format structure yes I do have to calculate these numbers and those numbers calculated are done on the side and as you do the homework problems you'll get accustomed to doing that okay You'll see why you're doing that on the side. And as far as the direct method is concerned, you know we still have the operating section, investing, and financing. Okay. And using that template, you can see that the terminology, the descriptions are all, you know, pretty much the same. Okay. Um, and you're filling it out the same way as you did over here. But the uh, big difference to notice, which I just you know, in the previous one, uh, the previous slide, I had said, if you notice that your investing and your financing activities look the same, okay? The difference comes up here in your operating activities, right? So when you're learning this, like I said, I understand the in, uh, indirect method. That comes easier to me, right? Because I know I can go down this here list basically and make these adjustments and I know how they're exactly formatted when I understand how to do this entire statement the indirect method the only thing that I really have to uh, learn as far as the direct method and keep in mind is 
this here operating activity section. Uh, that's the only additional thing that I have to learn between the two methods. So if I learn this, learn the, if I learn the indirect method and I understand it completely, okay, if I understand it completely, then the only additional thing that I have to, to pick up as far as the direct method is concerned is the difference in the operating section. All right. So um, with that said, hopefully that made sense. If not, go back and watch the videos again um, because it is cumulative and, you know, hopefully this tied it all together. If you don't understand something, you know, read the textbook, call and speak with an instructor. But as you do a few of these um, and you start going through the process, uh, it will become much more clearer, right? It's not on, on the surface, it's complicated and it looks complicated. But as, as, you, as soon as you get a couple underneath your belt, you'll start going, oh, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense, and it actually becomes easy to do, all right? So uh, that's it for this. The next uh, video will be the uh, focus on decision-making, um, and that will cover that, you know, the ratios that you're going to use as far as this, this stuff is concerned. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, call and speak with an instructor. I'll see you in the next video.